Was the Dwarf Planet series ever inhabitable? Well, no, not to any degree where you or I could ever have lived on it without a spacesuit, but according to some recent studies, it may have been enough to sustain simple microbial life. Habitability requires energy. Earth's source of energy is the sun, but for other planets or moons that are too far away, that might not be enough. New research by NASA has shown that Ceres may have had a source of chemical energy in the past. Maybe you remember when, in 2015, these pictures by the Dawn spacecraft were first released. Some people thought this might be alien cities, but in reality it's mostly salts deposited there by liquids that percolated up from Ceres' interior. We later learned that there is actually a huge reservoir of salty water, called brine, locked beneath the surface. Dawn also produced evidence that carbon molecules are present on Ceres. Brine and carbon molecules aren't enough though, we still need that source of energy. A study published just a short time ago on August 20th found that Ceres may have had an underground ocean of hot water around 2.5 billion years ago. The source of that heating was decaying radioactive elements within the rocky core. When a similar process occurs on Earth, where hot water comes from underground to mix with the ocean, it is a hotbed for microbial life. So the assumption is that it could also fuel life on Ceres, when these processes were active. Ceres also is not the only dwarf planet or moon in our solar system where we suspect life could have formed in the past. Europa and Enceladus might even be home to microbes today. If we can find evidence of life on such seemingly hostile worlds, the implications for habitability across the universe would be staggering. Thanks for watching. Stay stellar.